nine years of work and 50 million hours of labor are what this epic 15 billion euro construction project has demanded. High Speed One, the first British high speed train line, will have been one of the largest building sites ever attempted for a civil engineering project in the United Kingdom. The final 25 mile section, here in red, has now been added to the initial 44 miles in use since 2003. This portion will allow high speed trains to travel at up to 185 miles per hour. Your journey will be 20 minutes faster. One could describe Mike Glover as High Speed One's orchestra conductor. He has worked almost 12 years on the new layout. As the project concludes, he draws an emotional assessment. The project has been an enormous emotional coaster ride uh, for not just for me but the whole of the team and it's a sense of enormous relief and satisfaction to see the railway completed and functioning as well as it is now. Among the many technical challenges there was the installation of 68 miles of high-speed tracks, the development of the rail link that conveys trains towards the new line as well as the construction of the Thurrock viaduct, a technical achievement that respectfully kneels in order to go under the Elizabeth II bridge. The new layout also includes 25 miles of tunnels, 11 of which extend under the British capital. The excavation required enormous crushers measuring over 25 feet in diameter, a scale that will justify any lapse in modesty. And that isn't all. Most of the houses that found themselves on the path of the layout were not demolished. They were simply moved a few meters to the side. So a complete success for High Speed One? Not quite. The ongoing reticence of politicians has meant that the British have waited 13 years to catch up with the French. It was an embarrassment. I think your president, Mitterrand, explained it was very nice to see the Kent countryside travelling at low speed to get to London, but really that wasn't the right way to go about it. And he said it very subtly, but the point was made. So I think from then on, and that's 13 years ago, uh, we realised we had to build what you'd built in France, which was a complete high-speed line. Today, the chapter is closed with panache, and Britain can pride itself in having one of the fastest and most modern railway lines in the world. Whether High Speed One proves an inspiration to the English for the modernisation of their entire rail network has yet to be seen. It remains, after all, one of the least efficient in Europe.